I'm Rolf Klesen and this is a video about a fee increase, a planned fee increase for not pre-approved items in US trademarks in the list of goods and services. And my guest today is Ken Suzanne. Thank you for being here. Nice to see you, Rolf, in person. Yes, we are meeting here at, during the INT annual meeting in 2023 in Singapore. Um, and Ken brought uh, up a topic that was uh, very interesting to me as a foreign associate, as, a, as someone outside the US. The US is planning, um, they have a list of goods and services, like the tr ID trademark yes, manual or it's something. Ca it's called the Manual of Acceptable ID of Goods and Services. And it's something that's been around for a very long time. Right. But now it, I believe it's going to be even more important to take a look closely at it. Right. So uh, the plan is, you told me, that if you don't use uh, the, uh, the exact wording, the, approved, from wording. This, the yes. approved wording, then you have an extra surcharge for of $200 per class. Is that That's what we're hearing, $200 per class, which is a large amount, particularly right. if you're looking at seven, eight, nine classes in an application. Right. Wow. Yeah, so that would add a lot of costs to yes. US trademarks. Yes, I believe it's something that we, we need to pay attention to and, and, and look at and talk with our clients about it right. uh, when we're drafting applications. Right, and it's easy to avoid in the US where you can, when you file, you can take care of it. But if you have, um, if for example, for me, yes. I'm drafting a trademark application in the EU where I can use broad terms like for example, headgear or software or so, which may not be acceptable in the US because they are too broad. And then I want to file in the US. How can I deal with that? Yeah, and I think it's going to be important to, to choose words that are in the uh, manual that are accepted. And then and as we go, as, we, as this rule gets in, implemented, we'll learn more and we'll know more about those types of things. But it's important to, to pay close attention to the manual. And right. to use use IDs that have already been accepted. Yeah, you right. Know, when when you're dealing with uh, trademark uh, application issues, both in the United States and things that are coming in from other countries. Right. And if I don't want to limit the scope of my European trademarks, for example, mm -hmm. and still use, let's say, let's imagine headgear would not be acceptable because being too broad in the list of um, goods and uh, the approved list of goods from and services the ID manual. Manual. from the ID mm -hmm. manual, mm -hmm. and let's say hat hats would be allowable, could I then just say, for example, headgear, namely hats, would that be? It, to me, it sounds like that would be the, the right approach. The, the fact that you would be using a, an improved word from the manual should satisfy and avoid the, um, the surcharge. But it's something that we, we have to look further into. We'll, right. We will be monitoring that as these rules get you know uh, worked on. Uh, and once they are out, we'll make sure that you know we advise our clients what's going on. That's probably the best we can do, right? That's right. Just follow the news. Right. Or maybe file the priority application as headgear, comma, hats, comma, caps, and these kinds of things. And then... Sort of load it in early on. Right, yes. And then just delete uh, the broader term that po is not acceptable. Possibly yeah. another approach to have in there, right. to have everything listed. So, um, but it's something that definitely yeah. we'll be following because this is going to affect trademark practice right. you know, throughout, throughout the world. So if you want to claim priority from a foreign trademark, you have to make sure either the, real, the correct wording is already in the list of goods and services, original goods and services, or you have to amend the list of goods and services saying, let's say, headgear, namely heads, right? And it sounds like that would be the right okay. approach, but with something, as I said, we're, right. we're, we're learning as we're going along. Right. And it's going to be something that I'm sure that the United States Patent and Trademark Office will issue you right. know, uh, the rules and, and you'll be able to review them with your clients. Right. So the advice would be to foreign associates would be to either amend the list of goods and services by themselves or maybe ask the US trademark practitioner to help them with amending the list of goods and services yes. to um, fit these new yes. rules. Yes, and these, this is all related to the charges that will be incurred at the time of filing, at least that's what I'm right. seeing. There's also a whole slew of uh, fee increases, for example, increases in filing the statements of use and extensions. So that's all going to be coming down the pike relatively soon. Yes, and the, the, the class per, uh, the fee per class will also be increased, right? Yes, from what I'm, from, um, from what I'm reading, yes. Right. Wow, okay. So well, a lot of extra money to be paid, but okay. it's changing times. So that was very helpful advice for all foreign associates outside the US. Thank you very much, Ken. Happy to help.